time, which brings us to the question, is ARGP truly a national policy? Okay, Can I'm, we really call I'm, ARGP I'm gonna, I'm gonna a national a, policy? I'm going to ask a question here. Yes, yeah, Celestine, I'm going to ask you a question here very quickly to fast track this conversation uh, because it's a national discourse and I'm not sure 30 minutes uh, of your time here on the program is enough. But so let's talk about the new executive orders. Are you encouraged by these six page documents that the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, signed on May 18th about the ease of doing business and uh, how the MSMEs fit into this six page document? Yeah, we are, we, are, we are encouraged to some extent. And to some other extent, I'm not entirely encouraged. And this is the reason. This is my reason. There is a process flow for an enterprise that wants to get a loan from Bank of Industry, for instance, which is the government finance institution that offers cheap interest loans and the rest. So, for instance, if I own a, a, a coconut oil extracting business and I need to get a loan from Bank of Industry, I would have to go get my NAVDAC number. And for NAVDAC to give me the number, they will ask me to get my trademark from Minister of Trade and Investment. So, and this, so this is the process flow for somebody who is doing coconut oil extraction to get loan from BOI. So the question now is, has the executive order before preparing it, did we look at what are the real challenges? Because I have gone to trademark and patent office in use of trade and investment. And I looked at the processes through which they, they issued the trademark and patent. One, there is no fixed cost for getting your trademark or patent. The minister says it's 40000 But when you go to the department, commercial, commercial law department, they, they don't tell, they will tell you it's not 40000 not 40, So in breaking out these executive orders, I thought government would have looked at what are the challenges, why are things not working? Is there things we need to do to help these ministries work better? Because an executive order will only work to the fact that you are pushing people, you are pushing them to do something. But like they say, you can push a horse to a stream, but getting it to drink from the stream might be a problem. So you go back to these ministries and some of these agents, they tell you, well, there's an executive order, but did the executive order provide me the computer to work with? Or has it provided me the resources to work with? And now the ministry is going to wait for, to wait for budget to be passed, for them to get funding to to buy this, uh, the, this item, this equipment they need in places like trademark and patent and, and all of that. When, when, when will they get the funding to buy this equipment? What are the, the, the executive order said with some time, some places in 14 days, in 24 days, or in 30 days. Whereas these agencies are waiting for the budget to buy the items they need to fast uh, Hold on, Celeste. Hold, 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 hold on, Celeste. Hold on. The, you mean these agencies don't have computers, they don't have equipment to work with, ab initio? So what have they been spending all the previous budgets on? you have any idea? No, I, I, would, I would ask anybody to go to the commercial law department that manages trademark and patent and Ministry of Trade and Investment. You go, go, go see things for yourself. You have an entire department where they rely on one printer to work. Just one printer serving the entire department to work. So these guys tell you this is our challenge, this is the problem we have. It's not as if we don't want to work, but we don't have the materials to work. So if government had looked at what do we need to put in place to enable these executive orders to work, I tell you, we, 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 we may not have needed the executive order to push these systems to work. If we have put out a process that says, look, from the time somebody applies for trademark, the person has 14 days to receive it, and the minister is to be alerted if this uh, trademark is not issued, things will work. But a case whereby the directors in the, in, in the ministry are not even interested in making these things work, the executive order will only be at the, at the level of the national, the, the vice president talking. The guys who manage the processes are not yet thinking about what these things you're saying. They tell you, look, I, for, for instance, my staff boss picks me at 9, brings me to office at 11. By 3 p.m., I have to leave to follow the staff boss. I can't pay my, my, my way home. And they're telling me to work within 40 days to, issue, to, to produce a trademark. If I, if I need to search the database to see if this trademark this guy is asking for has been issued to somebody else, is not computerized, we have to do manual search. Manual search means they have to bring out the entire document they've been using in the last 10 years for, to grant trademark and begin to search to see if that name has not been given to somebody else. It's not computerized. So if you're giving me 14 days, how will I work within 14 days? So in issuing the, the executive order, we ought to have gone back to this place to say, look, what are the challenges? Why have we not been able to do what you're asking to do? Do we need to swap guys from this, uh, this department? Do we need to bring a new set of guys into this department? Do we need to automate their processes? What do we need to do? So this, this is the missing link that needs to be addressed. The executive orders are good, but to the extent that they'll be able to drive these guys, these civil servants to work, I don't really see that happening. Uh, so let's say one of the key uh, 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 fast track that the acting president of the administration has also pushed out was the, was, were those two laws uh, relating to collateral uh, uh, registry act and the uh, credit uh, reporting act uh, are you in love with these two new uh, set of laws 
that has now been signed that will ease access to credit for MSMEs. Yet, 100%, I'm in love with them, especially for the collateral re registry that says you, you, you mustn't bring just your houses, your building and the rest. You can pledge your cars, pledge your, your movable assets. I'm in love with that. And I'm also, I'm also working with partners to see how we can monitor if banks are really going to work with this platform because there's a problem where there's a challenge if you do not carry stakeholders in bringing out a, 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 in passing a law, passing a bill into law. If banks made impute into the Collateral Registry Act before it became a law, fine. But if they didn't make impute, they might begin to work again. But we are, we are, we are very happy that, we are, that, 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 that bill has become, become law. And we, MSMEs don't have to start looking for somebody who has a house to pledge a house for them, who has a, a, a building worth 50 million or 30 million. Your, 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 in fact, they, it's also said that you can use your stock existing stock as collateral for a loan. That is good. So the task for us now is to begin to work with government to say, look, how do we get the commercial banks to work with this platform? Because the DFI, which is your bank of industry, your CBN, may not be 100% uh, be able to finance MSME in Nigeria. Let's see how we can get the commercial banks and microfinance banks to key into the, uh, the, the, the act so that I don't have to go look for somebody who will pledge the house on my behalf to get a loan. Uh, uh, let's uh, talk about the bigger industrial policy uh, focus, of course, which uh, uh, have agribusiness embedded in it. Uh, there are about uh, 40 men and women that were inaugurated as the new National uh, Council on Industrial Policy and Competitiveness by the acting uh, president, and he's also the chairman. Aliko Dangote is there. A number of industry executives are there. Uh, I didn't see your name on that list. I, I'm not too sure how you missed that uh, list. But uh, are you, do you think this uh, advisory council should be able to deliver on industrial policy and competitiveness.